A very important part of lifecycle management is the ability, to, of course, to disable a user or to delete a user. Uh, in Identity Manager, we have a functionality called Temporary Disablement, which essentially means that we can quickly disable a user or inactivate a user, including all the target system where the user is represented. We can also do permanently disabled users, and we can also, of course, delete records in system and target system, and in Identity Manager itself, if needed. So, we will start off by logging on as a manager, and in the manager, we will grab one of the users. I'm going to pick a user called Robert Paul. Now, Robert Paul is an active user. He's located in, in Sweden. He actually works out of an office in Stockholm. And being a manager, I can look at his entitlements to see where, what he actually have access to. Now, I can filter, I can group, I can do all sorts of things in this list of entitlements. So I will actually start off by saying I'm only interested to see that he has group and active directory group membership. So I will just filter on those two object types. And as, I, as you can see on the screen, he has a list of active directory group memberships. Now, in order to temporarily disable or inactivate the user, I open up the master data. I scroll down and I can see that there is a tick box here saying that I can temporarily disable the uh, user. And I can also do that with an until date. That's typically used when you're on a maternity leave, for instance, and you shouldn't have access to this solution because you're not working. So I can set a date here in the future. Let's just grab a date in mid-February. And then I just simply press save. What's going to happen now is that the Identity Manager will inactivate the identity itself and also reach out to all the target systems and inactivate all the target system accounts that this person have and also take away all the entitlements that this person have. If we now go to the overview of the user after we have done this temporary inactivation, we can actually see that there are the user account that the person has are now inactivated. As you can see, it's also said user account is disabled. Effectively, what it means that this person cannot log on to the solution or do anything anymore. And also, if we open up the Active Directory users and computers and we search for this individual, as you remember, his name was Robert Paul. So I will search for Robert. And I can see that there is a Robert Palm here. As you can see on the icon, he's disabled or inactivated. And if I look at the membership list, he only belongs to the domain users now. He has no other Active Directory Group memberships because that's part of the inactivation process to take away all the entitlements and permissions you have in all your target systems. As you saw in the overview uh, that the target system accounts were inactivated, we can also now again click on the entitlements for this person. As you remember, we filtered because we were interested in Active Directory groups. And if I filter on this one now, as you can see, it's actually empty. Now, this has the effect of any connected target system that you might have. In this particular demo environment, we have an Active Directory as the target system, but it can be any kind of application connected by Identity Manager. We will behave in the very same way. When you temporarily disable a user, all the entitlements will also be taken away from the user. But Identity Manager knows what kind of entitlement that user used to have. So, if we go back to the user again now, that is in a temporary disabled state, we open up the master data, we scroll down to see that the person is temporarily disabled. Now, if we do nothing, uh, a month from now, the user will be activated again. But we can also manually take away this and say, save. What's going to happen if we do this is we're going to enable the user again. This is typically a very useful feature if you very quickly need to stop someone from being able to access the solutions or your applications or your IT landscape. Uh, so. What's happening now in the background is that the system will reach out to any connected target system and it will activate all the accounts again 
and will also enable all the entitlements on the accounts again. So if I look at the overview, the graphical overview of the user, if I scroll down, now as you can see, the accounts are no longer in a disabled state. They are now enabled. And also, if I go back to uh, the overview of the person again and click on entitlements, and again, I'm going to filter on account uh, Active Directory uh, groups, and I filter on it, and as you can see, they are now also restored again. Now, to really be sure, I'm going to open up the Active Directory users and computers. I'm going to find Robert again here, and search for Robert. And as you remember, it was Robert Paul. And as you can see now on the icon here, he's enabled again. He's back in business, and if I click on the members of as you can see, the list is now populated again with all the groups that he had before he was temporarily disabled. Now we're going to talk a bit about Password Reset. Password Reset is offered as a self-service in Identity Manager. A user can reset their own password if they know their password, so you can lifecycle your password in a normal way. If the user forgets his password, the user can use a question and answer profile, we can also use a function that we call issue a passcode. That's done by either a help desk person or a manager or, or someone who is entitled to do this. We also support things like two-factor authentication during a password reset, if either from a third party or from a two-factor authentication provided by one identity. So what we're going to see now is a user that has forgotten his password and then the user contact his manager and the manager will issue a passcode and the user will be able to use that passcode to reset his or her password. So um, I'm going to start off by trying to log on as, as the user. And now the message here says that the user has entered some invalid credentials. Now typically what happens if you try enough times, the user's account will be locked. It doesn't really matter from this uh, point of view because once you have the ability to reset your password, that will also unlock the account if it's been locked somewhere. So in the next step, the user contact his manager and the manager will log in and issue a passcode. So I'm now logging in as the user's manager and the manager is called Lisa and she will find the user here. She can actually search for the user so if you, she opens up all the users, and the user was called Ludwig, this is the guy. She opened up the person, as you, you saw it yesterday, that she can do all sorts of things. And one of the options she has on the screen is to issue a passcode. Now, once you clicked it, this passcode has a configurable valid time. By default, it's valid for three hours, but you can configure it to be something else. And the thing she can do now is to pass this passcode over to the user who needs to reset the password. What I'm going to do in, in between here, I'm going to paste this passcode into a, uh, just to be able to copy it and paste it later on. Now, once this is done, now the user uh, has the new passcode and from the login page, or even from a locked Windows session, if we install what we call the client extensions, the user can access the reset password reset portal. Uh, from the login page, it's called Manage Your Passwords. The user clicks on this one, and there are a few options here, as you can see on the screen. One is, I have a passcode. The second one, I want to answer my secret password questions. And the third one, I can obviously log in if I know my password, just to, to manage my password, of course. But in this case, the user have a passcode. You need to enter the user's ID, a login ID, you press continue. I need to copy the passcode from my um, text editor here and I'm going to paste it into this. I also have to uh, put in the capture code here as well and obviously if it's hard to read you can just click on generate a different one. Once you have authenticated with the passcode the user can now reset the password. Now you can either reset individual passwords because the user will probably have a password in all sorts of target system. So they can select, I want to reset one or more password. You can also say, I want to reset my central password. This will 
reset the password for all connected target system as long as the password policy applies, of course. You need to have a password policy that is viable for all your target systems. Uh, but I will select the, I want to reset my central password. I simply press next. And as you can see on the screen, it will also have a password strength meter here. So once you start typing your password, you will get, a, get an indication of if it's strong or not. So I will type a new password for the user. And as you can see, the password strength is weak in this. If you want to know exactly what password requirement is, you just click on this one. You can see uh, the password policy that's currently being configured. And then you simply press next. And now the user has successfully changed uh, his or her password.